It was December 31st, 1966. It was on the west side of Los Angeles. It was either at somebody's house or apartment. The feeling that people had, the fe feeling that people left with, was very, it was a real magical time. And I was like, man, if this ever catches on, this would be tremendous. About 28 million people around the world are celebrating Kwanzaa as they have for more than 30 years. It was almost 30 some years before the outside community even knew that there was a Kwanzaa. The celebration of Kwanzaa has grown in 30 years and has different meanings for different people. There are days, this is one of them, when you wonder what your role is in this country and what your future is in it. They took the chains off of us physically, but mentally they they there all day. They there all day. I don't know anything, hardly anything about my culture. You can ask me and I, I can barely tell you because I, I really don't know because they didn't teach me much. They didn't teach my friends much. And a lot of times we get confused because we are so bombarded with what the media thinks is black. They show us as ignorant, disrespectful. You don't see the people helping the community. You don't see us touring colleges to better ourselves. And so we are fighting all the time about how to begin to change fundamental uh, images and belief systems. We don't, we don't have a sense of of cultural background. Like it's not taught to us. That's what my moms kept stressing. I tried to pay attention, but their classes weren't interested. They seem to only glorify the Europeans, claiming Africans with only three fifths of human beings. They schools can't teach us. When I wrote this song, it was really me capturing my enthusiasm in that moment, you know, about all the history that I had never heard of. You know what I mean? I had never heard of Malcolm X and nothing like that. The saddest thing is that we still have to struggle and fight to justify having African history and African American history be taught in the school, in the public schools. School teaches you about history and culture, but our school system teaches us mainly about the history and culture of Europe. And when you don't have any sense of your own contextualization, you have very little idea of how to situate yourself. Education needs to be stepped up more. Some things need to be less emphasized, and some new things need to be brought out into the open a little bit more. And because, you know, learning about, you know, Patrick Henry and John Adams and shit like that, it's cool, but, you know, it's, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We should learn more about our backgrounds, and we should, like, look more into our heritage and our ancestors. And the school system today, they doesn't really do that, so I don't know much about my culture and heritage. Take would tell me that we was born into slavery. You know what I'm saying? We was made to be slaves. That was that was our purpose on earth is to serve other people. You know what I'm saying? Do you believe that? Not at all. From the media to academia, hanging brothers like coats. That's why in they schools, I always take two sets of notes. One set to ace the test and the other set I call the truth. And when I find historical contradictions, I use the first set as proof. Proof that black youth minds are being polluted, convoluted, diluted, not culturally rooted in anything except the Western massacre. And most of us, we are scared of Africa. Like a you from Africa. I'm from Africa, you from Africa, you African booty scratcher. <laughs> the worst thing that you could call somebody when you were a child or a teenager is a, a black African. Or why don't you go back to Africa? That's like telling me to go to China. I don't know no Chinese people. They projected Africa always in a negative light. Jungles, savages, cannibals, nothing civilized. And why then naturally it was so negative until it was negative to you and me. 
and you and I began to hate it. We didn't want anybody to tell us anything about Africa, and much less call us an African. And in hating Africa and hating the African, we ended up even hating ourselves without even realizing it. Because you can't hate the roots of a tree and not hate the tree. You can't hate your origin and not end up hating yourself. You can't hate Africa and not hate yourself. Our history didn't start here in the Americas. Our history started in Africa, which is our motherland. That was the first cultural crisis that we were not in tune and aware of our African heritage. Because of this crisis, there are a number of individuals, a number of groups that have seen the need to create institutions that would be long lasting. Whether we talk about those institutions or many other institutions that have been created, they have been created in response to the cultural crisis. A boy last week, he was 16, told me on television, thank God we got him to talk. Maybe somebody will start to listen. He said, I got no country, I've got no flag. Now he's only 16 years old. And I couldn't say you do. African Americans have always felt homeless in the United States. So we're always looking for a feeling of home. And I think Kwanzaa has done that, which is why it's been a success, because African Americans need a space that connects them to Africa. Kwanzaa was a celebration to celebrate ourselves, to celebrate black people's accomplishments. We sat on pillows on the floor and we ate our food with our hands, which was our way of being traditionally African. The sisters were dancing, the brothers would dance. We had the boot dances, the Zulu dances. And we talked about what we did that was right, what we did that was wrong, what we needed to improve on. We felt good that our children had something of their own that they could participate in and, and be a part of. Before that, we had no way to recognize our roots through celebration. It's our base, it's our earth. You embrace your home, you embrace the land of your birth. So it is vitally important that each one of us understand where we are from. For too long, we were not even considered human. We built this world. So how can you tell me some crap about a founding father in America who owned my parents? An African woman was saying, nothing about you makes you African, right? You, you go natural, you do all this stuff to try to change yourself into who we are, but you'll never be who we are because you don't do the things that we do. But I kind of disagree with that. I feel like everything derives from Africa. So how could you not relate yourself to that place? It doesn't uh, I, make sense to me. To bridge this gap, there needs to be understanding. We have to stop hating ourselves on both sides mm -hmm. and understand that this is a strategic thing to to break us, mm -hmm. to right. separate to us. Different. What if, if all the Africans and African Americans think they're the same? That's even more power. I don't think that I'll ever be complete if I don't really find out who I am, what village, what people what land, what country, what whatever. It has to be specific for me. It's the beginning of me finding it out. <laughs>